Hey everyone, welcome to another video and in this video we are going to talk about the resources which I use to find jobs in the US. I know you will be in the same position as I was 3-4 years ago uh, or you are actually in the same position as I was before and you're looking for jobs and you're kind of looking at all the resources possible for international students to maximize your job productivity or maximize your finding the job productivity when you are here in the US. Now, we'll look at a bunch of resources uh, which I personally use, which I personally use like every day while I was at college. And at the end of the video, stay tuned for it. I'm going to also mention some of the resources which students have shared with me. Uh, I post, post up a story on my Instagram. If you're not following me there, go follow me there. But I post up a story on Instagram saying that, hey, tell me what resources you use to find jobs in the US as an international student. And people came through and they sent in a lot of resources. So I'm going to mention some of those resources as well. So my first recommendation for you is going to myvisajobs.com. Myvisajobs.com is a website which was founded in 2006. It's one of the largest portals to find out if a company is sponsoring H1B or not. Now, you might be wondering like, hey, uh, you know, I'm going for a STEM course. I have my OPT. I have my STEM extension sorted. Why do I need to figure out if a company is sponsoring H1B or not? So what happens is if you have to like back calculate some of the stuff. You have to see that if a company is sponsoring H1B, then the chances of them hiring an international student is much higher as compared to a company which is not sponsoring H1Bs at all. Because what happens is like, let's say I, I, I am the owner of the company and I'm, I, I'm hiring an international student. I would prefer to hire an international student and keep him on board on the company for long term. Uh, I was taking a course for a professor who worked at a consulting firm and he told me it takes six years for them to properly train and uh, properly break that employee into the company. So uh, again, it takes a lot of time for a company to train you to make you more familiar with the processes of the company. And that's why if they're planning to hire you as an intern, their first instinct is to hire you as a full-time as well. Now, if you go to myvisajobs.com, it, it is so easy to check if, uh, if a company has applied for H1B or not. If they have applied for H1B, that means they are hiring international students. So we'll go on the screen right now and see, tell you what I'm talking about here. So let's go to myvisajobs.com. And this is what myvisajobs.com looks like. Uh, let's look at any of the employer. Let's look at Facebook, you know, one of the biggest tech companies, of course. Let's look at Facebook. And as you can see, these are all the roles for which uh, Facebook has applied an H1B for. And there are a bunch of H1Bs which has been denied. So it looks like three were denied, 14 were withdrawn, 4,647 were certified. And I'm not sure if it is including all the people from the previous year or not, I would assume that because that's a lot of H1Bs. So as compared to 2019, where it was 2827, they have applied for a lot of H1Bs in the past two years or so. And you can look up any of the companies. Let's go to browse employers on the website and let's look at all the employers which, uh, which have applied for H1Bs in the past year. So it looks like Cognizant, Infosys and TCS are the major players when they they, mo they apply for the most H1Bs, of course. Then there is Google, ENY, Capgemini, Deloitte, IBM. And there are like hundreds and hundreds of companies here. And you can, you can look up like every company which has applied for H1B. And all of these companies which has applied for H1B has the potential to hire an international student. So when a company com comes to your career fair and you're deciding, hey, whether I should apply for an internship or a job here or not, you should consider or you should prioritize these companies before prioritizing the other companies and when it comes to uh, myvisajobs.com there's a lot more information which they can give you i happen to have a premium account uh, which i can literally go into jp morgan chase i can see they applied for uh, 
how many H1Bs they applied for in 2020, what was the salaries of those H1B. I can even check their recruiter's name and number and the law firm they are using. There's just a lot of information and all of this is in, information is public, but my visa jobs just make it easier for you to look through those things. Now, if you plan to take myvisajobs.com premium services, that is $100 for a lifetime uh, membership. You can always sell it or maybe share it with people. I do not recommend doing that, but you know, wink, wink. So you can check the salaries of people who have applied to the companies and whose H1Bs companies are filing for. And by seeing that salary, you can negotiate the offer better saying that like let's say you are getting a salary of 120,000 but you know that some they have applied for the same role in the same location for 140,000 maybe you can negotiate and get a better offer and that's a possibility that's another use of myvisajobs.com but you can do a lot of stuff just by the free software go for it my second biggest resource is of course linkedin linkedin is such an underrated resource in India, it's growing, but it's not as crazy as how it is in the US. LinkedIn is a great resource to find jobs. I've talked about LinkedIn extensively in previous videos and you can check those videos out. I'm going to leave that in, in the description as well. And uh, one of the more underrated resource of LinkedIn is LinkedIn Learning. So you are coming to a new country, you are meeting new people, you are... Uh, you're getting used to the new lingo, new vocabulary, new way of doing things. And LinkedIn Learning is such a great resource where you can go to LinkedIn Learning and check out all these videos on how to write a great resume or how to uh, write a cold email or how to write emails, how to art, ask better questions, all of these things. And these people are professional people, they're LinkedIn profile is right there under the course now of course this is associated with linkedin premium but you can get one month of linkedin premium for free and of course you can make new accounts to get more linkedin premium so i would recommend you to go through linkedin learnings and check out some of the courses i've personally taken some of the courses before i'm going to share the link of those courses in the description so that you can check those out as well uh, and the best thing about these courses is that these courses are instructed by CEOs and recruiters. If a recruiter is telling you like, hey, this is how it works, then yeah, this is how it works. And whenever you're doing any sort of courses, right, it's not, it's just not that, hey, you know, 90% of the information I know all already through other things which I've followed, but you're looking for that 10% of the information, you're looking for that one hook or one extra factor which is going to make you stand out as compared to other people and then using that one extra information or two extra information which you picked up from one course to crack an interview or to interact better with the recruiters or to uh, write a better uh, cold email or cold message or how to network like all of these factors like small small factors adds up to a bigger picture and that's how LinkedIn learning is going to be really helpful for you. Number three is how to check the salaries. Now, why would you want to check the salaries? Of course, everybody who's coming as an international student, they have some loan amounts, they have some responsibilities toward their tuition fees. So you want to know how much money you will be making in later on and which companies pays the best, which industries pays the best and all of these information. And I think because of that, I'm going to share some of the resources which are going to be extremely, extremely useful for you. So one of my first resources, of course, Indeed.com. If you do not know, Indeed really is just like Glassdoor or LinkedIn for jobs, right? And you can look up different companies here. I actually looked at DPR Construction before. I, I, I'll look at, uh, let's say, American Express, okay? I'm going to look at American Express. I'm going to look at jobs in San Francisco for American Express. Francisco. And I look up at jobs in San Francisco. I see there is only one jobs, but let's see. Let's do like within 100 miles. And I see a lot of, a lot more positions have opened up. Maybe they have, okay, they have an office on, in Palo Alto. So, Let's look at a senior engineer's position and see what they can make and what 
potentially their responsibilities is now how you use indeed.com any other job portals is you go to them and you look at these responsibilities these are very extensive responsibilities and you see hey if i am an engineer in this company what is the company looking for in me as you know or what a recruiter is looking into uh, me as a as a potential candidate or as a potential employee in that in their company so on any day they are giving like job duties uh, minimum qualifications which you need or bonus points if you have that though like if you have these experiences so all of these factors are going to help you in uh, becoming a better finding better jobs i guess you can look at company reviews uh let's look at walmart okay i think i, I have I know a lot of people who work at Walmart. I'm gonna look at Walmart. Let's see. Walmart score is 3.5. We'll see how like salaries. They have extensive, extensive data on how much Walmart pays. As you can see right here, you can see the reviews. The thing I like like about Indeed as compared to Glassdoor that Indeed is much more organized and much more uh, descriptive when it comes to job opportunities. And let's say interviews. They have they have some questions for the interviews. So while I was looking for my new job, I just started a new job in DPR. And while I was looking at that job, I also looked at Indeed and I also looked at Glassdoor. And I picked up the interview questions, which usually DPR asks in interview, and that really helped me with the interview process. And this is something you can do as well. Now, a lot of these salaries like around the companies, maybe there would be, wouldn't be available or there would be average salaries. But what you need to do is find out like say five to six people. Now, a lot of times what happens is like students do not know what their role is going to be in the future. How I would tackle this situation is I would go to uh, people who have done the same course as me. For example, let's say I'm a construction management student. I'll go to people who have done construction management before or in like two, three years ago um, from the same university or from other university and look at what kind of roles they are in. So in, in as a CM student, you can be a project engineer, a, a field engineer or a superintendent or a uh, estimator or a VDC engineer. All of these job titles come along with it. So I know what to look for when I'm looking at Indeed and what to search for when I'm looking at Indeed. My next resource is payscale.com um, it is pretty much what you're looking for when you are looking for pay scales right you can look at uh, pay scales based on your company your job title your degree by certification so let's say i'm looking at degrees right masters of computer science the easiest thing to find because there's so much data about masters in computer science right it says average salaries of software engineer is 98,000. Senior software engineer makes 125,000. And that's an average. There is a um, there's a low point and there's a high point of 172. But you could be making anywhere between that. And data, data scientists make 98,000 on an average. That's a median salary. But all of this information is going to help you a lot to kind of gauge what companies are paying and what you could be making. So that's a helpful resource. One of the other resources levels.fi, but that's only for tech people. You can look up salaries from Amazon, Microsoft, PayPal, and bunch of other tech companies. And like, because all of these companies have different engineering levels, like for example, senior engineer or engineer or principal engineer or blah, 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 blah. And all of like level three, level four, level five, level six, all of these engineers, they have their own salaries so this information is very accurate like this would help you to negotiate your offer better and kind of gauge how much you're going to make later on just like other resources as well now when i was talking about levels.fi levels.fi has the following salaries available software engineer software engineering manager data scientist product designer product manager technical program manager accountant human resources marketing marketing operations recruiter sales biomedical engineer civil engineer hardware engineer mechanical engineer solution architect business analyst investment banker and management consultant so these salaries is going to help you again test the market out 
Now another great resource is the Career Center at your university. I think a lot of people undervalue or underestimate the Career Centers at your, your own university. Career Centers, first of all, interact with so many companies on a day-to-day -day basis when they are getting recruiters on board or when they're bringing in recruiters. So of course, use your Career Center um, for any sort of jobs. There was a portal for Purdue, which we used to use a lot while I was, I was there. I went with my CV because I had an Indian version of my CV and I wanted to uh, get an Americanized version of CV. So I changed everything and I went to uh, the career center and told them like, hey, this is my CV. How can I make it better? And they told me this is what you should do. This is what you should do. This is what you should remove and this is what you should add. So after all those things, of course, this is one more thing which you can do to make yourself better. Again, there's a lot of career center websites which are available freely for everyone to use. For example, I have a, I have a, seen MIT's website itself. I'm going to open up that right now. If you look up like sample resume MIT, MIT's career advising portal opens up and they have broken down what you need to put on your resume. And of course, one of the top universities in the world is saying this is what you need to do. You need to do this. And I have um, I have posted uh, on Gradical's website a blog about power verbs and what you should be using. I'm going to leave that link in the description so that it helps you better in finding jobs as well. Now for the resources which people have shared with me on Instagram, uh, one is joinhandshake.com. It's an app. I haven't really used it, but you can go to the website. I'm going to leave that link in the description. Of course, majority of the people said LinkedIn, Glassdoor, Indeed. Uh, a few of the people have said consulting as well. Consulting is a uh, individual consulting for tech firms, basically. So you can go to the website and check them out. They have a paid consulting membership, but you can follow them in, on Instagram. They make a lot of videos on how to improve your resume, how to improve your chances to get into tech firms. And uh, that would be another resource. If I, in the meantime, while I'm filming this video and before I upload this video, if I see any of the other resources, I'm going to post that in the video as well. Thank you so much guys for watching. I hope this was useful. I know this was a lot of information for you to take in, but I'm, I'm just hoping that you find a job and you find this useful and maybe you can help other students with these resources as well. So share this video with your friends with your colleagues, with your co-workers, whoever is looking for a job right now. Thank you so much guys for watching this one and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.